Welcome to this special anniversary episode of Firebase Release Notes, where we cover recent big and small releases from Firebase. I can't believe we've been doing this show for a full year already. Stay tuned after the regular topics, because we're giving away 20 special t-shirts like the one I'm wearing today. But first, let's dig into the updates from the past month. The Analytics section in the Firebase console now has the same look and feel as the Google Analytics 4 UI, making it easier for you to switch between the two views of your analytics data. The Firebase console still shows the same curated and opinionated analytics cards that it always did. But these now come directly from GA4, and some of the cards have been resorted for a more natural flow. To learn even more about your app usage, you can access the same data in Google Analytics 4 dashboard directly. Check the link in the description for more details. And if you don't see the new views yet, keep hitting refresh as it's rolling out right now. At Google I.O., we launched support for uploading Android app bundles via app distribution by linking your Android app with the Google Play. We now have an even easier way to link your Android app with Google Play in the Firebase console, where you can choose which products and apps you want to link, and you can link multiple Play accounts from a single Firebase project, and you no longer have to worry about matching SHA-1 keys to those in Play. And if you're using App Distro, yet you can continue to link the apps there too without revealing sensitive data to your Firebase devs. For more details, check the link that I added in the description, or open the integrations page in the Firebase console to go forth and link. The Crashlytics console now highlights certain issues if they have characteristics that may make them more important to your app health. We're launching three of these so-called signals to start with. First, there's fresh issues, which are new issues that happened in the last week. Then we have early crashes, where the majority of the crashes happened when the app started. And we have repetitive crashes. These are crashes that your users are encountering over and over. Are these new signals in the Crash Analytics console useful for you? Do you have a specific signal that you'd like to see next? Let us know in the comment section below. Firebase Performance Monitoring now supports sending email alerts for the start time of your app. And since Perfmon measures the performance of your real users, this means that you can get notified if the app start time for those users is longer than you expected. If you already use performance monitoring and use one of these real-time compatible SDKs, you're all set up to use alerts too. So visit the documentation to learn about what triggers alerts and how to set your preferences for them. You can now attach an analytics label for any notification that you send via the Firebase Cloud Messaging API, as well as for messaging campaigns that you start in the Firebase console. In Google Analytics, you can then use these labels to track all analytics events related to your notifications, beyond just counting messages, which is what we've always done. Read the blog post that are linked for all details. And finally, an update about two of my favorite Google products that I forgot to include in last month's episode. The latest release of our binding libraries for Flutter now supports writing applications that use the real-time database. So you can now target iOS, Android, and web applications from a single code base. See the release notes that are linked below, and thanks to user Deepak786 on GitHub for the contribution. Those were all the updates we have time for today. So if you were here just for the releases, you made it through and you can watch the next video in your playlist. Or you know, you could stick around a bit longer and celebrate the fact that this is our one year anniversary of Firebase release notes. Now, in the past 12 episodes, we've spent a total of 48 minutes together, and we had over 8,600 words to cover 73 big and small releases from Firebase. And those were just some of my own favorites, because there were almost 200 releases that came out the past year. To celebrate so many updates to Firebase, and so many of us watching them together, we're giving away 20 special edition Firebase release notes t-shirts like the one I'm wearing. To enter the giveaway, you need to do three things. First, watch this episode, and hey, you just did that, so check. Then you enter a comment below or a tweet about the episode. And then finally, you go to bit.ly slash frn1y, and you fill out the form that we have there. We will select 20 entries in a few weeks who get one of these special edition t-shirts. OK, now we're really done. If you liked the updates we had today or anything else we covered, give us a like or subscribe to the channel below. My name is Frank Ropuff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase release notes.